Welcome to episode 61 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mike Lundgren. In this episode, I sat down with Ach Petrosian from Mital in Armenia and talked to her about how she got into sourcing. I was uh, thinking that this is a typical story because I was getting into the profession when it wasn't a dream job and uh, you were just occasionally in the... You just happen to be a recruiter. You just happen to end up in recruitment and sourcing. So this is the case with me as well. I've been like the techie kid in psychology uh, department, and uh, I was uh, I was into open source before it was uh, before it was my part of my profession to be. Uh, and then I started as a boring recruiter. I mean, I was I was in recruitment for a couple of years, and uh, basically, I didn't know what sourcing is. I'm so ashamed of that now. But uh, then I, I was reading every day, but never uh, never came across um, uh, an article that taught me how you source. And then uh, and then I met Narek Aslikian. You might know him as well. And he like it was it was overnight magic for me because he he just simply asked like how do you do when you just are see the limitations of LinkedIn and then I said oh you can do something there and he was like yeah of course you can and and he showed me the magic of the sourcing and I just uh, just simply fell in love with it because it's it it, it, it has been I've, I've, I've been cutting back then just for fun and uh, it was just just uh, the perfect match of uh, you know recruitment done right and recruitment having some uh, some technical and some um, some ways of being more professional there. And uh, yeah, this is how I got into sourcing as it is. But uh, when it comes to uh, getting to uh, getting deeper into sourcing, uh, I think it's it's everyday job. I mean, you are, you are doing it every day and then, then I don't know, Facebook uh, kind of makes the obsolete their graph search and you do it again and you just discover the sourcing again every day because technology changes. And, uh, and th- this is what I love about sourcing. This is what, uh, this is what uh, feels uh, like uh, feels like evolving every day. Okay, yeah. and where did, I mean, other than than Narek, obviously, you know, doing a lot of things. Like, where did you go to learn? Who did you read, or you know, what kind of what kind of things did did you kind of look at to to get better at it? Uh, well, um, it, it was uh, like it was uh, it was one person. So Narek, uh, it was, and uh, and then we were learning together because I was involved with. Uh, I mean, we were we were trying to uh, we were trying to like call the, the I mean, uh, to discover the the, the role, uh, how mm-hmm. the sources work worldwide. And then I started reading like everything out there, starting from SourceCon, discovered recruiting brain food, like my everyday re- read this uh, this lately. And then uh, you just just go around reading every single article you can find out there. And uh, you just really don't pay attention into the uh, the authors until, until at some point you discover authors that are uh, like, constantly doing good at, at their job. Amazing Kai blog was doing good and I, I was an, another read. And then and then another 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 way of me rediscovering the uh, the, the profession was hackathons, mm-hmm. which which turned out to be a lot of fun because every time that you're going to, to participate in a hackathon, it's again this, you know, this feeling of anticipation, feeling of feeling of uh, uh, like lovable anxiety that you're gonna fail or you're gonna you're gonna wreck it and uh yeah actually uh learning with a team uh, and uh, we once were preparing for for a hackathon with the team and it was everyday work uh and we were like like you do like you prepare for uh in- intelligence tests and something <laughs> like that i don't know i don't know how the statistics are that but we were training our skills every day and we were we were doing all the sourcing games again and again, and yeah, it was it was all there, and it, it's still there. I mean, every time. Uh, recently, I was on a hackathon with our own leads, uh, and uh, and just rediscovered that I'm unskilled as 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 she, you know, it, it is everyday discovery. Well, Aaron, Aaron has a completely different way of thinking. Yes, so, uh, yeah, yes, when, yes. whenever, whenever he comes up with questions, people are like, I thought I was good, but this is, this is completely different. Yeah, yeah, and you, you need to ch- change a bit your mindset about the tackling the, uh, tackling the, um, you know, the question, because understanding the question is part of the solution. Uh, yeah. 
No, you see, you definitely see, like, comp- depending on who actually made the, the hackathon, uh, you, you need to get into, like, what is it, their pet peeve? Like, you know, some people are very much, you'll be able to solve it just by, by x-raying in a certain way. Um, and other people like Aaron, it's just, like, it's going to be convoluted ways to get to, to yeah. a place. And it's, it's not always an easy solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typically, it's not an easy solution at all. Like. <laughs> But tell me about the the market in Armenia. Like, what what's it what does it look like? Um, how how have you kind of you know made a role for yourself in in, in actually sourcing? And and how does companies look at that? Uh, well, our team is uh, kind of uh, fourteen right now, and we have been the first. Remito has been the first agency. Like, uh, we, I, I'm I'm talking it in quotes because we are not a typical agency, uh, and uh, I, I think rather it about I, I think about it rather as a team of uh, hardcore sourcers, and we were the first ones in in the market to be to be doing reg- tech recruitment, and it felt really lonely for a while, and it wasn't. I mean, anytime some someone is is a monopolist it's a sad story because you don't have the competition to fight with and you don't you don't have that uh, that you know that that mark to be uh, to be on shape of every time uh, anyways clients are coming back to you because they have no other choice um, and then uh, and then we discovered that hectones that uh, that took us into the into the international market and uh, keeping us on shape in that sense uh, but when it comes like uh, to do to the local market uh, like this is a really small market I mean 30,000 uh, tech professionals in general I mean maybe not Numbers aren't that right, maybe 2,000 more than I mentioned. Uh, but anyways, uh, the networking is the king here uh, because uh, you don't go, I mean, when we do international recruitment, we do mass mailing, we do, uh, like, we, we go with with the quantity. But uh, in the local market, you just have, uh, for example, I have kind of, in our internal CRM, I kind of have, uh, like thousand people and I know name by name. I know maybe who is their wife, what was their story, why they did hate this interview. I mean, you just remember the people and you are involved with the uh, with, with them in a deeper level than you do in the uh, international market where you just um, where you just can close the position without uh, without uh, that that deep of uh, connection. And yeah, this is why my, our main main goal is to build that long term relationships. Uh, and uh, still, sourcing helps a lot. I mean, uh, I mean, it is a competitive advantage when you know the um, know the places that no other is looking at, and you just find a professional that okay, you are the first recruiter in a while to reach out to me. Though the market is really small, and uh, and now it is saturated. I mean, uh, the top LinkedIn profiles, I guess, are getting uh, are getting spammed a lot, <laughs> and yeah. N- uh, I'm saying this with a uh, with a bit of uh, sadness because um, because when the community was starting, I was hoping that we won't get there. But yeah, people people are. Um, I mean, um, maybe you notice this that uh, you do double job here. You fight for recruiters' fame and dignity, and you do you just do your job. And I don't know. This is this is uh, this is the struggle you do every day because there are. Um, Objectively, there are not that good recruiters out there who are um, who are making the impression that the whole profession is useless and not valuable at all. And you you just build up your profession's names every day. Yeah, absolutely. What does your your sourcing tool stack look like? Like other than obviously going off of LinkedIn, you know, what else yeah. kind of tools? What yeah. what's useful in Armenia as well? Uh, well, recently I was doing a talk for uh, Index Tech in uh, Russia about GitHub sourcing and GitHub uh, remote assessment. It's uh, it's one of my favorite tools because being open source and being like uh, having everything out there, you just see the story. But uh, but only some like like two two thousand and something people are there in the Armenian market. But yeah, it's a, it's a good tool to start with, and it's a good niche place to reach out to people to have a unique. Uh, of talent uh, and then the typical you know the x-raying the personal web pages the facebook facebook is really i mean uh, for example uh, we don't do that much of twitter sourcing here because mm-hmm. not much profiles and everyone is anonymous there no, nobody's using that for professional i mean very few are using that for professional purpose and mainly that's uh, that's it i mean um uh, the, the the typical i'd, I'd say um 
Let me think of other other interesting. I, I like I, any other Russian networks like used a lot like Moikruk or or like VK. Are they used a lot in Armenia or, or no 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 not at all. I mean our local place for professional uh, professional profile building is LinkedIn and mm -hmm. uh, Facebook. People are uh, really. I mean I've noticed that the community is strong here on Facebook because you have LinkedIn, you have people uh, doing professional posts and uh, discussions there. But uh, Facebook is the place actually where the professional thoughts are uh, changed and telegram is really uh, really useful I mean I'm running one of the two of the local communities so for Python and for Java user groups and uh, the community is really really big there I mean uh, for example uh, the uh, the Python our group is kind of 500 people and uh, a bit less than that, but yeah, we we got there in two years, and uh, this is this is this is a place that a lot of people are hanging out for professional reasons. It is like modern day IRS, I'll say, for Armenian market. Yeah. Okay. So, but te Telegram sourcing is hard. I know you know because uh, the groups aren't sourceable actually. So you either need to be the admin, or you just even when you are an admin, you go with uh, one hundred people each time, or you have to do the the manual work there, not automatical at all. Yeah, but but it's but I, I have respect for that. I mean, Telegram is going doing a good job there, uh, caring about our privacy and not mm -hmm. uh, giving out a lot of information. It's good. And if, um, if a company would uh, yeah, like to start either looking at Armenia as a market to maybe establish themselves or to start stealing some of your mm -hmm. good tech mm -hmm. people and, and bringing them out of the country, uh, what would a, a sourcer have to think about when uh, kind of you know, looking and, and, and wow. trying to source in Armenia? Well, they they can always reach out to me. I, I will be happy to help. <laughs> that, that's 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 for the start. Uh, actually, we are doing a couple of that kind of projects. It, it goes well. Um, yeah, typically you go with a couple of uh, job boards uh, that are doing well in local market, like Stopem or uh, Basquid, like one job board that is uh, got a solution. Um, and um, hmm. That's an interesting question. Like, uh, what's what's I mean, the kind, go, what's the what's the go, tone generally like? Do you do you have to be very formal, or is it? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I mean, um, one one difference that I noticed when working for international market, like you do weather talk. This is what we call this in our internal trainings when we do, for example, communication training. Uh, weather talk a lot in international market. I mean, when you talk to someone from Czech Republic, for example, uh, but you don't do that thing in Armenia. I mean, people will, will think, what? Why are you doing that? It's so formal. It's so unpersonal. It's so robotic. And uh, like, it's more like you should uh, go out there and say what, what is in your mind and be just like um, accessible, I'd say, mm -hmm. like engaged in the conversation. Uh, people are um, pe people care about that. I mean, people care about when you when you care about them, like obviously, <laughs> the obvious. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd say no, it's not formal at all. And uh, tech uh, people here, I mean, uh, when we talk about engineers and uh, the uh, sportive uh, professions, um, they are kind of the, um, uh, I'd say they, they are the part of the nation that are the smartest, I'd mm -hmm. say it like that. I mean, uh, not, not anyhow, uh, decreasing the value of other professions, but this is the feeling I get. Uh, and uh, this is mostly people that are, that are coming from scientific path and people that care about, uh, care about right and care about transparency and fairness. So this is, this is, this is the way they uh, gonna respect you if you go with uh, being transparent and being uh, saying what, what is in your mind. Uh, but the market is really competitive. I mean, uh, people are thinking like, okay, we, we are, we will be, it will be easy and low cost to establish establish a, a, a company here, but uh, hell no. I mean, the, the, the salaries are going high and we are nearly reaching the net salaries. Are, for example, people are getting an offers from uh, Berlin top companies and they are just, oh, what, why is this number this low? And yeah, sometimes this happens. Um, but the quality of professionals, I'd say, is good. Uh, but when it comes to you know recruitment prices uh, and uh, how the uh, you know uh, how the um, 
I mean, it is very unproportional in this way mm -hmm. uh, because tech is very valued and the, the prices are really high, but the other, pro the, the other markets are really lower and lower in a, in a, in a drastic way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, this is, this is, for example, if you, if you're going to do an outsourcing of sourcing, for example, uh, Armenia can be a good place, for example, because the prices are really low and cost saving is a thing. I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously now being uh, some years into it, um, I'm guessing you, you're getting more and more. What is the, the kind of sourcing community look like now in Armenia? Has it, has it grown? Is this, uh, do you have a better kind of view that you're not seen as like nobody knowing what it is? Hmm. Uh, no, I'd say that I'm proud to say that a lot of people we are interviewing now, for example, for joining our team, uh, they treat so be, so being sorcerer and tech recruiter or just recruiter as a dream job. Mm -hmm. People are saying when, when I was in my first year of, at uni, I wanted to become a recruiter. I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, this is, the, this, is, this is what I wanted. And, um, and yeah, people are getting more involved in trade. We, we do a lot of... Uh, we have again communities. We share a lot about sourcing, sourcing uh, hacks. Um, of course, there is there. There are people that are more advanced than the others are. Uh, and uh, not being humble at all here, I'd say our team is really good in that sense because I don't know. We have Sats here in our team. She's, for example, she's very awesome. And uh, people are um, people are getting this knowledge share within the companies, out of the companies, and the culture is there. I, I, mm -hmm. I'd say that uh, people care about learning more and being better as a sourcer. And uh, they are doing, in my feelings, they are doing that in an international level, not just, uh, not just local, local level. And yeah, the, this is the feeling I get. If, uh, if people want to uh, stay in touch with you and uh, yeah, see see what, what happens both in Armenia, but also what you're sharing in general. How can I best well, do that? Well, on Facebook, I'm mainly communicating with the local people. Uh, <laughs> so Twitter will be a bit good, good choice, I guess. I mean, I've, I've noticed that the sourcing and recruitment community is really strong on Twitter. And I mean, everybody is active there. So Twitter is a good source to, to stay in touch. I don't know if, if my PMs are open, but I will open them. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Just in case they aren't. Thank you very much. I look uh, forward to, uh, yeah, to seeing you and meeting you soon again. Yeah, same here, same here. Thank you. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.